Welcome to the Old Mott's E&A Cup of Joe. Do us a favor and subscribe to the podcast and leave a positive rating and review for us. We'd really appreciate it. Let's get into this. South Carolina had a, uh, had their game against Old Dominion. And we knew, we, we've heard about Old Dominion being tough, about Old Dominion not being a pushover. And, you know, we, we heard all this week about the win against Virginia Tech, you know, a couple of years really ago. don't believe it. <laughs> well, you know, you, you'd, you'd like to think that, yeah, that's great. They're, you know, strong. They're, you know, a, a fighting, you know, group of kids and they always play tough. And, but, you know, we'll blow them out. And lo and behold, it wound up not happening that way at, at all. Um, and it's, it's concerning. We're concerned right now. We're one game in. And it feels like we got a big shoe above us and we're kind of waiting for it to come down on top of us. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that is because we, as, as far as South Carolina fans, all off season, there's been a lot of hype around this team because of Lenora Sellers. And uh, we, we, we thought – coming into this year, you know, we said, Hey, you know, this is going to be a special year. You know, we've, we got Nick Harbor at wide receiver. He's, he's the cheat code. I mean, he's the fastest guy, one of the fastest, you know, wide receivers in all of college football, if not the fastest. Uh, Lenora Sellers is a huge kid. It's not only big, but he's also strong and fast. And, you know, we, we've got our offensive line gelling together and, you know, we're bringing back some guys that, you know, got a little bit of experience and it's, it's like, we just kind of, bumbled our way through this game I, I don't I don't know exactly where to put uh my finger at we we run we we only passed for 114 yards and that's not good when old Dominion passed for right at 200 and mm-hmm. one of our strengths on defense was supposed to be our backfield and you got old Dominion that comes out and throws for almost 200 yards in your stadium and you're telling me that, you know, the defensive backfield is one of our strengths. Well, that's that didn't seem very strong right there. Now, we did do pretty good up front on the line, and we did do good on the edge. Uh, they, they didn't run uh, against us uh, particularly well. They only rushed for 108 yards as a team. But, you know, still, it was a close game. There's a couple of factors in that game that made it interesting. Number one, I think, was the lightning delay. And I hate to blame anything on weather circumstances. South Carolina came out and right there uh, off the bat, you know, off the bat, as soon as Old Dominion gets the ball, you know, we get them, we sack them, we're driving them back. We've got a fumble right there on the goal line. You know, we go in a few plays later, we score, get the ball back, and Raheem Bell, Raheem Sanders, excuse me, is – He's running over people. He's going crazy. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in a sunny day at williams Bryce, lightning delay. And it's like, you know, what in the world? We had basically a full house right at 80,000 people. Everybody was nuts. Everyone was, you know, going wild. We had all the excitement, all, all of the hoopla that goes along with, with college football. And now you got you to gotta empty your stadium. So you got to empty your stadium. You got to wait 30 minutes. You got to bring everybody back in. You got to warm the team. And, I, you know, I think it just kind of broke the rhythm. And yeah. it, that's that's when Old Dominion started chipping away right there. That's when they scored. They So they made it 7-10 to 10 right there in the first quarter. And then everything just kind of stalemated and stagnated. We just pushed each other around. And they took that lead in the third quarter. In the, in the in the fourth quarter, and things got scary. I mean, we were we were afraid. We you know it's like, hey, well, you know, we're about to get beat at home by Old Dominion. Mm-hmm. Luckily, our defense, which is supposed to be the savior of this team, is the defense. They did step up, and we got the ball back, and you know, we were able to to put the game away. So yeah, we got the win. But I'm not real confident about how I feel about that win. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I'd feel a lot better right now if that was thirty-three to nineteen, 
or yeah, 36. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's not so much our scoring. It's the 19 by Old Dominion that really bothers me. Because if, if Old Dominion comes into your house and puts 19 on you and it's basically a one score game in your house and now you're turning around and you're going to Kentucky, who's had your number the last six, seven, eight years, now you got to go to Lexington, Kentucky. Well, what do you got after that? Then you got to come home and face LSU. So, I mean, we, we could be looking at, you know, what do we, I don't know. We got some other, who's, who's it? I don't even know the schedule anymore, Joe. Uh, Kentucky next week, right? Kentucky next week. I'm, I'm trying to think who we've got, who we've got after Kentucky. Is that, is it LSU? I can't even remember anymore. Um, yeah. You play LSU pretty quick. Yeah. So it's, it, it doesn't get any easier for us. So you could be looking at one and two right there off the bat. And that's not a position that you want to be in at all. Not the SEC, not with the schedule that these guys have to face down the road. So, you know, I don't know. Russian, we did pretty good. Raheem Sanders finished with 88 yards. Um, and then Lenora Sellers, quarterback, you know, almost he had 68 right there at 70. Rece- receivers, we got one receiver right at 60 yards. But he only had two catches, and one of them. So you know, one of them was a really long catch, and the other one was you know short catch. But I don't know. We, you know, we, you look at four fumbles for Old Dominion and one fumble for South Carolina. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know they 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 gave you four fault fo- left. They fumbled the ball four times. They lost two of them. So they gave you the ball twice, and you still only won by four points at home. And when you start to look at it that way, it doesn't look good for what you got coming down the road. Yeah, you because- mentioned that, uh, that um, momentum change with the lightning delay. I've been through a few of those in Manhattan, and it kind of takes the crowd out of it because everyone has to leave. Everyone's kind of irritated that the game got postponed. You know, everyone's just hanging around. It's hard to get the fans juiced up again. Like, right. like it's easy to do or the game or kick off and on that first defensive stand and it's if your team scores right away and the fans are really into it, then lightning. And then it's like, oh, geez. You know, it's hard to tell how much the effect that really had on things. It sounds like it did have a little bit of an effect on it in this game anyway. It, it did. Our, our student section didn't recover – as much as we would have liked them to. And it was, it was also just outrageously hot mm-hmm. in Columbia that day. Shane Beamer was given his uh, weekly press conference today. And I think he said that was the second hottest game that he's coached in Columbia. Uh, so that lets you know, I mean, obviously late August, early September in Columbia, South Carolina, you know, it's hot, but when you're packed in with 80,000 other people, you know, and then they give you a 30 minute break. You go sit out and maybe grab a cold beverage and get the AC blowing in the car. A lot of those people kind of, huh, I don't know. Might uh, yeah, might some <laughs> people probably just left to be honest. <laughs> sure, sure, exactly. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. That's what happened. I mean, once, once you go out and you get a little taste of that air conditioning, you know, it's like, hey, maybe I'll just go ahead and take this to the house. Mm-hmm. And we had we and at, at that point in the game we did have the momentum and it did appear like South Carolina was about to come out and just flatten them and, and steamroll them, but that's not what wound up happening as we right. see. Yeah. So y- you can't let. Yeah, I've been those, there, and done that with other games that I've been at. So but the, I've gone the, the same way. But the thing, the thing is there that that concerns me is great teams or even really good teams. They don't that care. doesn't matter. Yeah, that, yeah that's not going to that's not <laughs> right. going to affect them. So that lets me know right there, you know, we're we're not to that level of being a great team. Um we're we're a growing team and and that evidenced itself very much on on Saturday. Looking forward to this coming weekend. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh I think Mark Stoops is is I'm not going to say he's got South Carolina's number, but I mean, if you look at the win loss here over the past couple of years, he's got South Carolina's number, Uh, you know, and so you're going to their house. 
Uh, luckily, I think that we're we're pretty healthy. I mean, there might be a couple little nagging little things here and there, but nothing serious. I think we've got all of our starters coming back and key players coming back, so that's that's good. It's it's still going to be a tough game, and honestly, I, I until I have reason to believe otherwise, I, I would be very surprised to see South Carolina come out of Lexington with a win. Having said that. South Carolina has been one of the most Jekyll and Hyde teams that you can imagine. A couple of years ago, these jokers get beat by a Florida team that they had absolutely no business getting beat by. They were wearing Florida out. They let Florida come back and beat them. And at that point, we're like, well, this is over because now Tennessee and Clemson are going to curb stomp us. And what do we do? We wind up turning around and hanging 63 on Tennessee, knock them out of the playoff. And then we go to Death Valley, beat Clemson in their home stadium and knock them out of the playoff. And at that point in time, Clemson and Tennessee were both, uh, both on the edge of that, that playoff scenario that they, they, they both literally could have made it. That win when South Carolina beat Tennessee, it knocked them out. And when they beat Clemson the next week, it knocked them out. And that same South Carolina team blew a game against Florida that they had in the bag. So welcome to Gamecock football. This is yeah. <laughs> th- this is what you'll see the ride is like. We'll we'll go and we'll lose to a Walford or an App State or the Citadel, and then we'll turn around and we'll beat a Bama or a Georgia. And it's like, what what, what are you guys doing? But for uh, for for many years, that's that's been the mantra of Gamecock football. So we'll have to see, but. Going to be interesting this weekend up there in Lexington. I'll be pulling for them. Going to be a tough one. I will be too. 